couldn't possibly shower thanks on you as enthusiastically as my wife has, but I am grateful for your assistance, officer. He tries to play it cool, remain professorial, but inside, this man is itching for some news on those traps. Good. Okay. And? Completely empty? Surprise, tempered with fear and trepidation. He doesn't know what to think yet. Maybe you're joking? No locusts? No Fazmid either? That's not ideal, but... It just me. She's engaging in a well-known self-deception called motivated reasoning. You should correct them. Of course, more clever. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked off the locusts and escaped. This is good news, though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. Another trip to the reeds. Why don't you try convincing Morel his hypothesis is invalid? Thank you for the vote of no confidence, Gary. An officer, I appreciate your concern, but please leave this to the experts. Unless you have an alternative hypothesis you'd like to venture. You're jabbing at the soft underbelly of his psyche. He realizes he's gotten defensive. Actually, no. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now, and brought some great news too. My gratitude, and the gratitude of the Société Cryptozoologique de Ravachol, is yours. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The lieutenant looks out the window, impatiently. Damn it, lieutenant. Have you no intellectual curiosity? Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed, as though shaken. Most likely the hands of a young person, hands small enough to fit inside the trap, too. You should ask the red-headed boy. Kuno. A little hooligan. But what would a child want with bags? Oh, my dear Morel. You've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. Delinquents. My favorite. Oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please, let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I I'd love to play suzerainty, but... Lena. I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it, even if it's bugs. Morale, it's been fun, really, but I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. No, no, no need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. The first man to break formation is always a blow to leadership. This is bigger than he lets on.
you missed a good show before. A kid came by and completely fucked the tree to pieces. He fucked the tree up. Fucked it good. It was porno. You need to act decisively. It's Kuno. Use Kuno words. Shoot that shit at Kuno, pig o' naught. No, Kuno doesn't give a fuck about bugs. So he knows locusts are bugs. Oh my god, I told you that shit is lame. Shut up, C. Now they're gonna take you to lame prison. She sounds like she's about to cry, out of disappointment at Kuno's newfound lameness. Deny everything, Kuno. You need to lawyer up. Kuno's not going to say anything without his lawyer present. Lame. That rings some bells. Could this be connected to Night City? A.K.A. the City of Rage. Yeah, that's pretty lame. Sounds like art. Oh God, Kuno, no! It's going to happen now. They're going to make you lame. Stop it, C. No one's going to make anyone lame. Kuno's got this under control. There's definitely something going on here. You should check out Kuno's shack. The one with the pig's head. Kuno doesn't fucking care. All around you, the hisses and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows. Like skyscrapers, spires of dirt and sand rising. Accommodations for their insectoid inhabitants. Well, detective, it appears you've solved the case. Of the locusts. For the missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case. So at least that's going well. Yes, I feel we are nearing a real breakthrough. I'll let you handle the Kuno side of things. You are doing just fine. Fuck, does Kuno care? Yeah, Kuno took the books, so what? So it wasn't the Phasmid. A wave of disappointment washes over you. It's not Bugtown. It's the city of locusts. Locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. Stop! Locusts coming down like a shadow. This must be the night city he mentioned when you asked him where he's been. Yeah, local city, city of rage, city of lights. There's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his imagination. The girl forces herself to watch again, the corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. The lameness is causing her physical pain. The damage may be permanent. Maybe I am. Did he just say I? Kuno usually calls Kuno, Kuno. Oh my God, Kuno. He's going to make you totally lame in like three seconds. Don't let him, Kuno. Yo, fuck you, see. Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f Kuno doesn't give a shit. Don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. In it, you hear snow melting. Dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. Without a word, she disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. 
He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. Use this momentary confusion to take control of the situation. You've got him. Now convince him to leave the cryptozoologist's traps alone. I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. C was right. The girl's face appears again, above the fence, just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. She doesn't know whether to be glad because Kuno's finally convinced of the lameness, or more worried because of his continued use of the first person singular. Kuno is Kuno, not I. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? Huh. He recognizes the name. The fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. There's silence between the two children. They're not saying anything to each other, nor looking in each other's direction. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical, but I have a good feeling about this. So it was just a child. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. She acts chipper, but something's changed in her tone. A hidden worry. Something is secretly gnawing at her confidence. It's not this Kuno kid, or the missing locust. It's something else. Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can. <coughs> he has a 38 degree fever. His resilience has given way. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season, when it's warmer. That's just something people tell themselves when they fail. There won't be a next season. Not for this. Find a phasmid or admit defeat, people. We are getting really carried away with this, aren't we? Fine, it's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast. But after this... He wants to see this tale through, as much as you. Otherwise, he'd have stopped this already. But he cannot let it drag out after this. Really? It's too much, officer. <coughs> what Morel means is we're grateful for your help. Here's a fresh batch of locusts. They should slide right down the funnel. And thank you again. We will definitely mention you, should this lead to a discovery. I'm not talking co-discovery, of course, but... Uh... Wow. Co-discovery? You'd be famous. You'd show them all. This does tingle the pleasure center. This would show them all. We need to get you on that list of discoverers. No question about that.
The trap stands empty amongst the reeds, powdered with snow. No insect sounds or movement around. Only the reeds' melancholy rustling. Fantastic. The locusts, dazed from being transported, slowly begin to acclimate to their new surroundings. They're not really going to get the chance to get comfortable here. Good, now that's done. When do you think we will return to our impending apocalypse of a murder investigation? Don't answer that. It was a rhetorical question. He doesn't want to. But if there is one more cryptozoological runaround, he must force the investigation back on track. This b Hello, dear. It's good to see a familiar face. Thank you for doing that, dear. Her smile is weary. Her earlier ebullience has left her. Morel still isn't feeling well. I convinced him to stay at Gary's to get some rest. I'm afraid the cold has really gotten to him. I'm sorry, dear. You've had to drudge through them so many times. Such is field work. A young person's game, as they say. Her voice is shaky. What is going on here? Morel will eventually, or we'll talk Gary into going back out, perhaps. The lieutenant stares at his shoe, caked in mud. He doesn't say anything. Really is too much, sweetie. Thank you for your dedication, but I can see you're coming down with a cough yourself. Very strange. Why is she not letting you do this? It's like she's given up. Different? How? Answering a question with a question, for example. Defensive isn't her usual style. I'm in doubt, sweetie. That's all. Everyone is now and then. It's a... a strange feeling. I haven't really told this to anyone, but... you are a police officer. And when a police officer asks, you must answer. Do you ever wonder if some lovely story from your childhood is just that? A story? Or a dream? Seeing the Insulindian Phasmid was just a story I used to tell people. I didn't really think about whether it was real or not. Morel's so proud of it. He always tells everyone. A terrible sting in the heart. Regret. N no, sweetie. There's more to it than that. Morel was so eager to believe my story was evidence of the Phasmid's existence. That I'm some queen of the cryptozoologists. That. And for years, his belief made me believe, too. But now, we're both getting old, and he's still working himself sick out in those reeds looking for it. But what if I was just wrong? I think I was. The lieutenant opens his notebook, but doesn't write anything.
I'm not sure of anything. Sometimes I still see it, you know. The real memory. Not the memory of the memory, but it's so hard to tell the two apart. Either way, I should go. Poor Morel is running a fever and I need to get him home to Jamrock before we overstay our welcome with Gary. Oh no, thank you, but I can get there on my own. This old thing is gas-powered. And then a taxi home. It's not so bad. Really? Oh, sweetie. Please don't get stuck on a dream. Take it from me and Morel. Okay, it's 1113 Tabernacle Road. Jamrock, but... A sigh. She doesn't think you'll need it. You too, sweetie. Thank you for everything, truly. Even though it turned out to be a... A waste of time. A dream. A lie. A fool's hope. Say her lips move in in silence. Like that, she drives off. The gas engine mutters quietly as she gets to the doors, then pushes them open. Outside, it's snowing. We should go to... Somewhere out there, a kilometer to the southeast, a gust of wind shakes the felled building, rattling dusty windows, beckoning with strange coldness. To ask the wind once more. Yes, what is it? Ah, oh, very good. Let's see what you have. Is this a Kristallsprach? The Model 9 is an excellent piece of equipment. I don't know what you had to pay for it, but it should work very nicely. It's not often that she allows herself to be awed, but the way she holds the Kristallsprach reminds you of someone receiving a precious gift. I believe that means we're ready to get started. I should warn you, once we begin setting up this antenna, we'll need to see the whole process through. There won't be any second chances, any do-overs, you understand? So if there's anything you'd like to get in order before we depart, I suggest you do it now. Ah, yes, I wasn't sure what to do about that, but then I discovered an abandoned power source down by the edge of the bay. It's obvious. She's referring to your half-sunken Caprice 40. In that case, let's move on. That's up to you. At a minimum, I would make sure you are physically and mentally prepared for an intense and difficult process. Once we begin, there can be no interruptions. At the very least, you should make sure you're wearing a good pair of gloves. Radio engineers typically carry overpriced solvent sprays to clean the antenna connections. But in a pinch, some common ammonia works just fine. Finally, there's the question of stimulants. Some people prefer to keep illegal amphetamines on hand to help with their work. I'm not one of them, but they do exist. It is possible that technical fields attract a certain kind of personality. I haven't given it much thought. That's fine. Return to me when you're ready to go.
A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Saint Baptiste, you know, the pharmaceuticals company. Saint Baptiste Pharmaceuticals, the one that sells meds out of Saint Baptiste. That one, there. She is right. Saint Baptiste, the company, derives its name from Saint Baptiste, the city. Itself so named because that's what it is. A rare case where that really is the full etymological history. As far as almost anyone knows, at least. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Nosafed is a nasal spray. Duramine is a really good painkiller. Magnesium is a dietary supplement. Hypnogamma is... I don't really know what Hypnogamma is. I guess it makes you feel less shit. It's recommended to use after lots of partying, studying or exercising. Um, no, sorry. I'm not like a doctor or anything. Nosafed heals plus one health. Duramine heals plus three health. Magnesium heals plus one morale. Hypnogamma heals plus three morale. Yeah, there's like an ampule somewhere. Okay, don't like overdo it or something. Okay, here. I hope Saint Batiste makes you feel better or something. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sun your bottles clunk into the machine. You see several packaged raincoats. The packages are small, discreet, sloppily stacked, making them easier to take unnoticed. No need to worry about knocking over a display. What is what? Um, it's a raincoat. If you want to buy one, then it's only for real. Her attention is drawn to the raincoats. Stealing one undetected will now be more difficult. A colourful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall, inviting you closer. The bottles wink at you in the light. The smokes too glitter in their wrapping. It's like looking into a kind of heaven. Your knees are weak. There, in that dark green glass, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth, wine, alcohol, beer, alcohol, love, alcohol. Um, guess not, no. I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health, but I guess you already know that. Don't ask, don't look, don't do anything here. Just go away, get back to work. Um, the pale aged vodka is special, I guess. It's stored in pale for a couple of years, which makes it super expensive and super strong. You know. I mean, I already said it'd hurt you. I don't know what else they do. Substances give powerful bonuses to your main stats at the cost of damage to your health or morale. Cigarettes raise your intellect while damaging your health. Alcohol raises physique while damaging your morale. Use medication, like nosafed and magnesium, to counteract the negative effects of substances. Note, consuming substances can have unforeseen consequences for you. What is it? Very good. If you'll help me with some of this equipment, then. Back across the water lab. At least we are getting our exercise in today. If you'll please carry that amplifier, officer. And if you'll take that spool of cable, we should be able to move it all in one trip.
And now if you'll just connect that here... It's done. I believe we are ready. We're ready to try, at least. Please put on these headphones. There should be two extra sets. I've configured the channel so that only your microphone is set to broadcast, officer. We'll all be able to listen, but anyone we reach will only hear your voice. You will need to transmit your connection request while I attempt to locate the warship's public frequency. You will likely encounter some interference, but it's important to keep transmitting your request until you're acknowledged. Ready? Good. Beginning transmission. Go ahead, officer. You're all alone out there, wandering a blasted heath, calling out to the night. But there is no reply, except for the buzzing of invisible machines. The lieutenant looks up at you with a nervous glance. Nervous for who, though, you cannot say. Try again, officer. Perhaps you're simply imagining it, but it seems as though you're learning to pull apart the fibers of this auditory felt. You focus on one strand in particular, one that sounds very nearly human. Nein, Liebling, das lasse ich nicht zu. Wie kannst du unseren Lungen bloß auf einen dieser Dinger nach Brede fortschicken? Marianne, mir erzählt, dass Oskar nicht mehr seit er auf einem Luftschiff aus Gar zurückgekommen ist. Sie halten ihn die Psychologen für vollkommen normal. Aber sie hat das Gefühl, seit seiner Rückkehr mit einem Fremden zusammenzuleben. Something about her son going to Fredford on an aerostatic to see some psychologists or maybe it's the psychologists saying it's normal to have feelings for strangers foreign languages were never your strong suit the rustling of dry autumn leaves waves breaking at a distance a thousand wings beating at once Liebling, bitte. Er kann auch nächstes Jahr zur Akademie gehen. It's cross talk. In all likelihood, they can't hear you. You have to keep trying until we get a signal through. Again? It's gone now. I didn't say anything, Detective. Someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. An uncomfortable silence falls over the connection. It's been a long winter. Long and cold. I promise you I didn't, even though it certainly sounds like me. I can't say with certainty, but it sounds very much like anthroponetic crosstalk. It happens sometimes when sending transmissions across long stretches of pale. Ah, yes, of course. That must be it. Outwardly, they both exude calm. But there's something disturbing about this thought to both of them. Pale, 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 pale. Seems to be missing from your records. Natürlich halten ihn die Psychologen für vollkommen normal. Ah, oh, very good thinking. I'll engage it now. Someone has been maintaining it. That's much better. Please, try again. Where's your partner? Are you there, Lieutenant Dubois? Please acknowledge. Damn! Even with the crosstalk suppressed, the signal is still very weak. I did not expect simply locating the signal to be so difficult. We must consider several variables. Local anthroponetic conditions, the sophistication of our transceiver, the quality of our connections, and the physics of our antenna itself. 
Unfortunately, we have a more than adequate transceiver, so I do not believe it is causing any problems. And we are also unlikely to change our local anthroponetic conditions. So, the next step is to thoroughly inspect our connections. You need to climb up there and look at them for yourself. But you don't have the technical expertise. Someone has been maintaining it. Something about this setup seems dimly familiar. But you'll be damned if you know what you're supposed to do about it. Images of your body smashed against the pavement flood your mind. This is dangerous. Your gloves give you a solid grip on the metal bar. This feels pleasingly familiar. You don't exactly cut a lithesome figure, but after several moments of scrambling, you manage to hoist yourself atop the monument. itself is nothing more than a little braid of exposed wire wrapped about the hoof of the horse. A copper fetter, it cannot slip. The whole monument is covered in a thin but durable layer of oil and grime. It's obvious no one has cleaned it in years. The programmer mentioned ammonia, but anything alcoholic should dissolve the oils creating a cleaner and clearer connection. Almost immediately, the ammonia begins breaking down the oils around the copper wiring. It's not that stuff came in handy after all. Ah, oh, very good, Doctor Sir. Once the oils have been dissolved, you wipe off the connections with your sleeve and reattach the cable. Hmm, I had hoped that the signal purifier and cleaning the connections that we would have it, but perhaps I overestimated. Unser einziges Kind. Er kann auch auch nächstes Jahr zur Akademie gehen. Short of changing the shape of the antenna, I'm not sure what else we can do from here. And the lollies are all jammed together, so that's unlikely to happen. Ideally, narrow the receiving mode so that we can isolate the warship signal and eliminate the post stop. And if you don't know what you're doing, of course you could just make it worse. What do you mean? You adjust the antenna manually, with your hands. I'm afraid we're out of alternatives. You're just going to have to go for it. She's right. The responsibility is yours, and yours alone. There's no turning back now. You are face to face with Philip III. The Bronze King looks toward the west. Something about his features seems bizarrely distorted. Not intentionally. It's a matter of perspective. The King was never meant to be seen from such an angle as you've attained. This faithful steed is in nearly as poor a condition as its rider.
Your grip is firm, yet controlled. The swelling in your headset guides your hands as much as your hands guide the bronze horse head. It's almost like you're hearing through the horse itself. That's very good. Just a bit more to the left. Nein, Liebling. The signal is clear. The storm has passed. This is another voice, a live voice, on the other end of this invisible bridge you've established. Try it now, officer. Lieutenant Dubois, this is Coalition Warship Archer. We are acknowledging and accepting you. Aha! Excellent! You are connected. Now be quick. I don't know how long I'll be able to preserve the signal. This is it. You're finally getting to speak with those who hold real power. And by that they mean the ones with the guns and the warships. There is so much you wish you could ask. Your efforts have bought you some time. But you can't forget what you're really here for. Please be advised that you are speaking on a public frequency. What is your request? Acknowledge. To reach the committee, all you need to do is fill out the appropriate request form and submit it to the liaison for public affairs. If the liaison accepts your request, you will be invited to address the committee at their next quarterly public hearing. We believe the next hearing is scheduled for July. She's got to be jerking your chain, right? You can't wait that long. Not a problem. If this is a time-sensitive matter, you may file an emergency address request with the liaison for public affairs. They typically respond within a few weeks. We're afraid that is quite impossible, Lieutenant Dubois. We cannot transfer you to the committee because we are not entrusted with that responsibility. We are simply the second signaler. Then, why are you wasting time with her? You should demand to speak with who's really in charge. We're here, Lieutenant. Though we have to say, this is all quite out of sequence. This line of argument is quite pointless. You should abandon it. This isn't about you. Not really. It may have been at a certain point. But you've let go of that perspective. This is about your responsibility to all of Revachon. Now, take a deep breath. Look upward. You don't have to bear the burden alone. What? How do you know this? Lieutenant Dubois, this is a very serious claim. Please describe the situation as succinctly as possible. We will forward your summary to the committee. There's papers rustling in the background. She's clearing her desk, preparing to take notes. There, you've wedged your foot in the door. Now, if you can show the Coalition how much they're needed, they'll have no choice but to intervene. You have the facts. Just lay them out beneath the cold light of reason. Please continue. We're listening. Please 
We have it. Is there anything else the committee should know? The lieutenant is afraid you're going to say something too outré. Acknowledge. Please stand by while we transmit our summary to the committee. A long winter. I'm not sure how much longer I can keep the signal clear, officer. Lieutenant Dubois, this is Collision Worship Archer. Please acknowledge. No, you know this tone of voice. You've heard it before. She's about to deliver some bad news. We are sorry, Lieutenant Dubois. The committee has declined your request for an emergency address. Specifically, they said that disputes of purely local concern do not fall under their purview. They added that they expect the RCM to fulfill its responsibilities to a high degree of satisfaction. You're welcome. We must say that it has been interesting to speak with you. If nothing else, the RCM is frequently a source of curiosity to those of us aboard the Archer. Now, the first signaler has informed us that we must update the receiving frequency. His connection will be cleared in four, three, two, one. Après le monde, le gris. And the line goes quiet. The lieutenant gives a long sigh as he removes his headphones. He looks up at you. I think it's best for you to climb off the statue now, detective. Your real work is done here. Good. Now give me a hand with these amplifiers. Leave the cables. I don't feel like making two trips. <sighs> What's one more trip across the water lock? Well, this was an interesting collaboration. Perhaps you're more reliable than the writers I used to work with. So, that is not a difficult part to clear. In any event, just leave that equipment here. I'll put it away later. If you'd like, you can take one of the extra headsets. I don't need so many spares. Now you'll excuse me. I have to get back to my own work. Yes, what is it? The swallow, you mean? What a great. Thanks. The once bright mural towers above you, saying, 
Feld Electrical, R and D. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Suddenly, there's a sigh, carried on the molecules around you, moving, flowing from high pressure to low pressure, like that of a woman emptying her lungs. She wraps the collapsing stone box in front of you in her breath, flowing through it. In through the collapsed roof, flowing down a concrete staircase to the basement, sweeping away footprints in the dust on the stairs, and then the beach below the boardwalk, its winding tunnels, a whisper away. She's down there. Okay, why? Right, how do we get in there? The doors were on the collapsed side of this building. They're gone, basically. Perhaps you can climb them. We are not climbing anything. I'm 43 years old, and I plan to live to see 70. There has to be a way to use brute force. Climbing sounds unsafe. Brute force is safe. Look around and find something to break if the ladder fails. out from beneath the rotten boards of the boardwalk. Could this be an alternative path into the fell building? A building like this must have multiple doors serving various functions, perhaps a basement axis. Your eyes slowly begin to adjust to the darkness inside the drainage pipe. The lieutenant looks over your shoulder. Given that this isn't a martial arts thriller, it's highly unlikely, and not without risk to our health either. However, the pipe suggests there may be an entrance to the basement around... He means the pipe must be coming from somewhere in the building. And it's right here, a maintenance door. It's jammed shut. The subtle approach isn't going to work on this one. Oh yeah. Big boy time. This needs you to put your back into it. At first, you can't make anything out in the darkness at all. As your eyes adjust, you see some trash. Crumpled up newspapers, cigarette butts. Someone has half-heartedly spray-painted skulls on the right side. And, and nothing. Broken glass from bottles thrown against the walls of the pipe. A syringe. doors are heavy and the flaking rust hurts your palms but together with the lieutenant you manage to slide them open just enough to squeeze in good work shall we
mustachioed and mutton chopped man, amateurishly depicted, gazes at you with sad eyes. The plaque reads, K. Mazov. There is a spider web in the lower left corner of the portrait. Years worth of dust is shaken off. The full head of hair matched by an ample moustache and sideburns look a bit silly. Someone crouches, heels digging into wet sand. Hands sweep across the sand, grain sticking to the frayed skin of the fingertips. An old man sits on a slab of concrete and taps his fingers against the glass of a scope. You shudder. Yes, I can see that. Looks like some communists were hiding out here. They left a long time ago. The lieutenant does not seem to share your enthusiasm. Millions of depictions of Mazov have been produced. They're not all connected. Besides, that looked like some student. The youths always go for this kind of stuff. We have found a lot of those lately. I guess what most people think of as history tends to linger in random neighborhoods. Martinez being what it is, no one has gone through the trouble of cleaning out the old bunkers. Half a century? This was probably part of the network of defense posts the communards built against the amphibious landing. I think the purpose of this bunker was to produce propaganda. It would have had radio equipment back then, but that's all been looted. You mean like Ruby? No, I think we've stumbled on a piece of history. Swarm of hornets buzzing under your scalp. A strange tingling you can almost smell. No, what do you mean? I don't feel it, but we should still be careful. There were footprints back there, and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. No, but you are the sensitive one. It's not a quib. The situation is dangerous. He trusts your gut feeling on this. Possibly. If she isn't here, we need to plan our next step carefully. Once we detain a credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do. We'll set in motion events we have no control over. You will upset the balance of power in Martinez. The deadlock between the company and the Union will destabilize. This part of town is a fine clockwork puzzle. Disturb its peace and it will start breaking down uncontrollably. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. Well, we are not responsible for what we can't predict, are we? I don't think the entire city will be raised to the ground. If you can't predict it, there's nothing you could have done. I leave that to your judgment. You already know what I think about cross-pollinating information like this. It's dangerous, but... He just can't be sure. Maybe it will yield something useful. Uh, yes. There won't be time for that once things go down. Matter of fact, I don't think there's time for it now, but... If you must. I think I see a cavern. Maybe more sellers? I think we've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. Or maybe not. Either way, once we go deeper, there will be no turning back.
Suddenly, your entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the setting, you hear a woman's voice. It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head all at once. But her words are the only ones you can make out. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But here we are. As she says the word, officer, you feel a spike in the agony. It sounds like the entire radio frequency range is screaming directly into your neural pathways. Nobody. That's not going to help. You can't shield yourself from this. It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. The explosion of static you're hearing is the ULAN frequency. Saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? I expected as much. I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. A pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pale, literally crunch the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale, people lose their minds in just a few years. So, what we are experiencing is a concentration of radio waves. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She likes telling you about the machine. Keep her talking. Look for an opportunity to break loose. The pale? It's the end of the world. I built it myself. And she's proud of it too. As she ought to be. This is way beyond your abilities. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? Oh yeah. Way beyond. Yeah, I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. No, once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. So she thinks of you as hunters, not cops and of herself merely as prey. If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. I'm 
mattress. God damn it. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. She's carrying a two-barrel front loader. Remain careful. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but she can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. There's only three meters between you and the machine. If you keep her distracted for long enough, maybe. Be careful when you make your move. That'll be it for questions. Bide your time. I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. So you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. So nice. That's one knife I didn't want to find in my back. As opposed to the other knives she's finding there now. Hardy for one. This could have turned out pretty bad for me if you hadn't walked right into 25 bands of ultra-high frequencies. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching. Though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, he wouldn't have broken first. Oh, I knew the kitten had claws, but not like this. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Titus and his boys, man. They told us you were on the coast. Even now, Kim is a paragon of professionalism. He is trying to make a clean cut of telling her she was betrayed. Well, fuck. Those guys liked me, I know it. But this is what happens to people whom people like. A dour despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck did the rest of you get by? I did, didn't I? Now you've come for me. Fuck them all the same. That did make her forgive them. A little. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. The strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. I didn't like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. Plenty of broken people who don't come with that kind of body count. Besides, they're paid well for what they do. Yeah, sure. And I didn't like wild pines sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fuck ton of other people around here. She didn't hate him, okay? I'm listening. Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. You mean the length of a toilet break? That wouldn't even have been enough time. Wow, now I'm curious. Please, explain. No, not since I was 14 and hanging out in the only diner in Dardun. Haven't been into low-risk, no-reward games 
since moving to the city. Why? Don't know it, but also, the shot couldn't have come from the roof, or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. No one mentioned. And? The gun store. Trigger Happy Jacks. What did you think? That I'm going to squeal on my gun supplier? Sorry, not that kind of gal. Sure don't. The breach loader? No. This is such a white man. A Nachtway 80 front loader. Two barreled. Not really what you were looking for, I'm guessing. Yeah, evidence. Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Claudia's rooftop. Sure, I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. The view's pretty bomb, too. But you might say the antenna was the main attraction there, yeah. Along with Claudia. It's very powerful. I used it to tune into RCM frequencies. That's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. Yes, I'm sure. And anyway, as I said before, the shot had to have come from afar. Yeah? Where? How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him, and there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes, her tired voice. She's been staying up late, listening in on the conversations crisscrossing Martinez. Police radio? You've been following the case? Who hasn't? You know, I can still see him there, in Claus's room, lying on his side. He was still warm, but the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a good long while. She eyes you warily, as though gauging your sincerity. She's refusing to adopt the demeanor of a cornered animal, a leader with no one to lead. She still wants to retain some control of the situation. It's okay. We just want to... Uh, uh... All right, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers, like always. Then Klasia comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves. So I grab a seat next to her. Oh yeah, super. But I didn't think too much of it at first. I'd seen her party hard before. No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be a first for her. But no such luck. She was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so yeah. You made it look like it'd been hanged. What? No. Faking a lynching was her idea. She looks shaken. She wasn't surprised to be ratted out, but framed. Yeah, in cold blood. It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to get the Hardy Boys. She lied to you about that, too. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. As I keep telling you cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. 
but even if this is true, why aren't you worried that lynching might lead to... War? The thought crossed my mind. But the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way. Although the way things are going... She doesn't want to talk about this, but not because she has something to hide. She doesn't want the guilt. Eh, yeah, fuck it. I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. I saw you roll into town. I wasn't about to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. That strange, distant fear is getting close now. Yes, you. Everyone says you're his peon, his human can opener. Through the sudden sharp pain in your head, you hear the lieutenant mumble something to himself. Fucking hell. And why me? You hear through the white noise. It's especially bad suddenly. Felt like a vein exploding. Everyone in Jamrock. The cops. The criminals. Why do you think I'm holed up in here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? If she knows that about you, she must know your real name too. Harry Dubois. One corrupt motherfucker with the disco pants and a funny tie. Agent to la puta madre. So she knows your name? That doesn't mean you're on the tape. Criminals make up bogeyman stories about cops all the time. All of this just means that you're effective. Criminals know you and are scared of you. I don't know. Sounds pretty convincing to me. Right. Sure. You don't know. Yeah, sure. She doesn't believe you. I'm sure La Buda Madre himself will explain it all to you soon enough. You know what I did. I fucked him over. And now I have Harry Can Opener in my lair. Fucking Titus. Wait, one thing. Possibly small, but she said you rolled into town. Was that you singular or plural? She might know something. Yeah, you had your death squad with you. What happened to them anyway? Well, it wasn't this scrawny dude. You had two guys and a lady. The guys looked pretty buff. Lady wasn't bad either. One of the guys seemed chipper, a blonde. The other had a brooding something or other about him. And the woman, the woman was the only one in uniform. All were carrying. That sound about right? No idea who these people are, literally. Satellite officer Vic Mayer looks out of the window grimly, then puts his coffee down and turns to patrol officer Miller. We could either take a room here in the world go home for today. Let's go home, Jean. Nothing's going to happen today, she responds quietly. Jean takes his blonde wig off. Call Heidelstam. He can give us a ride. I've faced worse. She hasn't. She hasn't gone up against three armed people before, as she believed. What bunker? Don't know anything about it. No one's been around since I set up camp. But I'm sure I'm not the first vagabond to... The lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell, but... <sighs> All good, officer. Be careful. She looks at the machine, 
assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. She's truly desperate. She thinks she has no other options. You need to give her options. You know. This is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. She stares at you, frozen, the gun still in her mouth, eyes filled with dark intensity. Then something shifts in her. Gratitude, doubt. She's still ready to go. Her neck and shoulders relax and her grip on the gun loosens. Day of miracles, I'll take it. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant, and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. Good call. I would have done the same, had I not been incapacitated. He couldn't take it like you. It irks him. Then he gets over it. Her tent. We should check it out. The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. See anything? Rega Monthly, Journal of Material Science. More technological digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. <laughs> 